there, there's those peaks and, and you have to have fresh content for them. Hello, and welcome to 2011 A News Odyssey. Today on our show, we will look at the 24-hour news cycle and how it's changing the news. Also, we'll examine Twitter and its impact on journalists and you, the viewer. It's a quick way to see what people are posting and what news organizations in particular are posting. There we go, that's a beautiful sound. As well, Jill Constantine talks to a young, aspiring journalist heading to Africa. Hi, my name is Ashley Dunbar, and welcome to our show, 2011, A News Odyssey, produced by New Brunswick Community College Journalism students. Today, we'll be taking a look at the world of journalism and the way in which it's changing. Today, you have access to news just about anywhere you go, even on your cell phone. Tony Bourgeois went to find out where most people are getting their news. Um, I get my news through the Bugle, I get it through the Gleaner, I get it through um, the television. Basically, that's where I get all my news. I like so ATV or CBC news, what all. The news and things, but then on music stations, I like music stations, and the papers. It seems a lot of people in Woodstock rely on television and the newspaper for their news, but more people are reading their news online rather than in the papers. According to the Pew Research Center, 41% of people get their news online. With the news being broadcast on TV, radio, online, and being printed in the newspapers, news media are finding more ways to keep you informed. I do. I actually read the Globe on the Blackberry as much as I do the paper, so yeah, both play. Smartphones are making it easy and extremely convenient for people to check the news whenever they want a quick update. A lot of news apps for smartphones are free and easy to find. Uh, well, on the, on the, uh, the Blackberry Torch, um, the apps world is where you can go download different types of apps. Uh, but there's a news section so you can pull up uh, a, a ton of different apps and, and I'm looking at some right now, they're all free. We all have our own ways we like to get our news. But even if you just have a phone, you should still be able to stay informed. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois Community College News. In today's world of Twitter and 24-hour newscasts, you can read or watch news stories anytime, anywhere. Journalists are filing stories more frequently, and that might be changing the depth and quality of the news you're receiving. Mike Trusiak spoke with journalists on how they're coping with these changes. With the amount of content being fed to the public through television and the internet, producing a quality news story is becoming increasingly demanding for journalists. I don't know that the role of the journalist ha has changed all that much. Uh, the big exception is is with the um, number of deadlines they have to hit and and the frequency of them. Devin Judge is head of process improvement for Brunswick News and is overseeing the Bugle Observer's shift from a weekly paper to an online news outlet. Every couple of hours we're going to have to produce updates to stories, we're going to have to produce new content because with with online you have your peak times of day and you probably have about three of them throughout the day where people go on um, before they go to work, before they go to lunch, before they go home. Despite the added weight of hourly deadlines, aspiring new journalists like Jennifer McNeil Hay feel it is just another obstacle in trying to maintain the accuracy of a news story. You know what? Um... I think it's all in just getting used to processing the information and once you're in that mode and once you're uh, you know, accustomed to always uh, almost translating information into something palatable for somebody else. With the explosion of social media, the public's appetite for instant news is growing. Journalists are being forced to adapt to the pressures of ever more frequent deadlines. This thirst for up to the minute information has its advantages though. Crises in Egypt and Iran have made social networks like Twitter an invaluable tool for journalists. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. Internet service providers are making your internet faster, whether it be uploading or downloading. We looked at the details behind fiber optic internet. Jeff Stairs has more. Bell Alliant is the first to connect an entire city with fiber optic internet services. Bell Alliance Fiber Op is said to provide its user with faster uploading and downloading speed than copper wire DSL internet, as well as increased bandwidth capacity. Bell Alliant representative Isabel Robinson explains just how fast this new internet service can be. You might have somebody using the main computer 
you might have a couple of laptops, you might have somebody using a gaming system. So all of these types of activities require bandwidth. And as I was saying, not only is the speed faster, but more people can be connected and doing things at the same time without affecting the amount of speed that they have. So if three or four people are online at the same time, maybe you're downloading a movie or streaming a movie or you're trying to, you know, update your Facebook status or whatever the case may be, um, there's so much more ability for people to do that at the same time within one household and, again, to do it very quickly. Jason Brown is a technical service agent at Woodstock's Media Smart. He explains that the main difference between fiber optics and regular high-speed internet has to do with the material used to transmit signals. Uh, essentially, it differs from normal because it's going instead of going over copper, it's going over fiber optics, which is essentially a wire that has little strands of glass, flexible glass, that can pass through, has much more throughput, I guess, than normal copper. Uh, and each strand of glass can hold many different lines, they transmit them through different uh, frequencies so it can hold you know, 10, 15, 20 times more than a single strand of copper. Although speed will be greatly increased through the use of fiber optic networks, many consumers still rely on dated copper wire systems. But not everyone is concerned about these new high speeds. My internet speed isn't too bad for what I use the internet for. I mainly just use it for doing research and checking email and things like that. I don't download or upload a whole lot of stuff. I'm not a gamer, so I don't really need a super fast internet connection. Just run the we conducted a number of internet speed tests in Woodstock. McIsaac's home had an average download speed of 9 megabits per second. Their upload speed was much lower, about 2.4 megabits per second. I guess it's a bit concerning just because I'm wondering why it's so low when we're paying for a service and it's closer to zero than it is to one. Um, but I don't really upload very much. McIsaac says that although speed is a concern, the price of the service mm -hmm. is always her first consideration. Um, I guess speed wouldn't be the first thing that I look at just because I mostly use it for email and surfing the web, not watching videos or downloading movies. So I would probably go for price first. Other consumers rely on the internet entirely for their informational and entertainment needs. I use the internet for my children's school projects, for recipes. Uh, we don't have cable right now, so we rely on the internet for news, entertainment, uh, to keep files, uh, information for a lot of different reasons. We're all on it every day. Lutz's speed at home was worse than McIsaac's. She is also satisfied with her services, but for different reasons. Well, I'm very happy with uh, the speed of our internet service. I suppose partly because it's an improvement from what we had. Robinson says that although all consumers don't see a need for such speeds, from a service provider's perspective, upgrading the network before the need exists prevents customer issues before they arise. Something like streaming video online has become increasingly popular. And those kinds of services um, you know, require that technology keeps up. And by having a technology that keeps up right out of the gate, then you know down the road, you know, if something else comes along, you don't have to go and change out all of your technology um, or upgrade the network. All of these new services and networks are a boon for journalists. This new access is critical for news to be delivered quickly. For sure. Um, I think in order for news to be delivered in a timely manner, you would want the most optimum upload speed. So if it's taking you an hour to upload a video, then it could be old news by then. Fiber Op is promising for the future needs of consumers and journalists. Even though most people might not fully utilize these services, having the network in place makes us ready for the future. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. The world's last typewriter factory has closed its doors. But that won't be the only change in technology you'll be seeing. Jocelyn Turner has more. He fell asleep. Oh, Journalism has experienced many changes in the last decade. Journalists can now use advanced technology like smartphones with apps allowing them to broadcast news material from anywhere. NBCC Woodstock's journalism department head, Paul Carter, does research to ensure the students are prepared to work with the latest tools of the trade. 
Uh, I visited several radio stations and I visited uh, several uh, newspapers just to get a feel for what's out there in the, in the industry and what are people actually using. Doug Dickinson is one of this year's graduates. Journalism turns to faster, simpler ways of telling stories and the equipment in the program had to follow suit. Dickinson finds the transition from the classroom to the workforce an easy one. The older cameras were really hard to learn to use and uh, having the new cameras made it easier in every way. Uh, I give him the Bugle one, Observer's uh, managing uh, editor, Jim Domville, says reporters will soon need to focus on all three forms of journalism instead of just one. You know, be shooting video, be shooting still, uh, plus writing your stories and uploading them uh, immediately. The program at NBCC actively simulates a real-world newsroom. Carter and Dickinson believe that students entering the industry will be well prepared for the work of the future. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Coming up. More about the way technology is changing the way news is gathered and what that means for you. From Twitter, online newspapers, to the cameras that shoot your news, we spoke with reporters on how they're dealing with a shift in technology. Welcome back. Did you know many journalists and news organizations use Twitter to break their news? Today, Twitter has changed the way people communicate and how they get their news. With a higher demand for breaking news and by-the-minute updates, journalists have taken on additional tasks such as tweeting as a news story develops. Kyle DuPont has more. We live in a fast-paced society and smartphones have helped us to adapt. Apps like Twitter have enabled people to stay informed with what's going on in the world. CBC's Dan McCarty realizes the importance of Twitter. In the age of the Blackberry, uh, we find out through Twitter things that are happening uh, at news conferences but before we actually see the reports filed. And so it's really become an integral part of a news gathering uh, and news shaping. Twitter has brought the public into the realm of the media in a way that has never been available in traditional forms. Now I get instant analysis uh, from people who like or more often don't like what I'm writing and that's great, I mean that's healthy, that's, that's what journalism is all about. Uh, there's so many voices out there that before they would just be uh, talking to their friends in Tim Hortons. Now they can, talk, now they can add that voice uh, into the Twitterverse. People like Caitlin Dean use Twitter to keep up with multiple news sites and specific journalists in a simple, easy to use fashion. I find that it's a really quick way of skimming headlines. Like, it's, not, it's obviously not a full source of news, but if something's going on, like if it's an election night or some sporting event, it's a quick way to see what people are posting and what news organizations in particular are posting. With a device like this smartphone, people are now able to keep up with the day's news from anywhere. And apps like Twitter offer you the opportunity to communicate with journalists and offer your insight into what's going on. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. We've talked about the 24-hour news cycle and the expectation to have immediate video and news from a breaking story. Just a few years ago, such response to breaking news wasn't possible. Lighter equipment has changed that. Jeff Stairs explains. Jeffrey Bento Carrier is the sports editor at the Bugle Observer. A skilled photographer, he's been using cameras on the job for years. I've been in the industry uh, 27 years, and uh, different technologies crop up, but it's to the benefit of the reader. This fall, the Bugle Observer will be going online with an enhanced website that will feature streaming video. Reporters like Carrier will be trained to capture video live at the scene using equipment they already have access to. Well, with the modern cameras, uh, you can shoot video, which is very important because sometimes people want a two-minute version of a story that may take them five minutes to read. Many consumer-level video cameras now offer full HD capabilities, but these days, the most popular camera fits right in your pocket. A relatively new addition to the reporter's arsenal is the common cell phone. A number of new phones, like Apple's popular iPhone 4, allow easy capture and sharing of high-quality video making covering a breaking news story as simple as pressing a few buttons. So with the iPhone 4 we have the high, high definition uh, video recording. Um, with it we have, you can face, uh, put it on Facebook, YouTube, anything like that, it's easy. Broadcasting photos and video to the web gets simpler by the day. And in the competitive world of journalism, business savvy media outlets are becoming quick to translate new technology into better coverage for their audience. 
In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. Many of you may not remember the last time you held a paper copy of your local newspaper. From the national edition to your local weekly, many news organizations have moved online. Ethan Hazlitt spoke to a local journalist about the transition of going from print to pixels. In small towns, people rely on solid local news to keep them informed. However, now there are more ways to get the news than through the newspaper, or at least they're becoming more popular. Online newspapers is the future of news. Um, we're, we're seeing that move now towards the, towards the online readership. According to Newspapers Canada, 4.1 million copies of the printed newspaper are sold every day in Canada. However, since 1994 when the Halifax Daily News went online, almost every newspaper has followed suit. Online news is becoming more popular. More people are looking online to find their news. With the younger generations that are coming up through, they prefer um, to get their news from the online. So, I mean, we need to, at this point, we need to find a balance between the two. Devin explains that the younger the person is, the more likely the tech savvy. I will read newspapers if they are handy. Um, I will not go out and buy newspapers, but generally I just get my news online or hear about it in word of mouth. Valued at over $3 billion in Canada, the print business will not simply disappear overnight. However, they have seen a significant loss in recent years, whereas online news has been on the rise. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. Up next, paper trails or paper trials? Is access to information legislation an easier way for journalists to get information, or is it closing more doors than it's opening? And an inspiring story about a young journalist heading to a far-off place to lead the way to better journalism. Welcome back. For more stories by our students, visit our website at jschoolnbcc.ca. You may get your news from several different stations, but did you know most of those stations get their news from the same source? It's called the Canadian Press, and earlier I spoke with a few journalists about it. The Canadian Press Wire Service consists of a number of reporters that offer national, regional and sometimes local news stories to subscribers. It keeps us in contact with what's happening elsewhere in the region and across the country and around the world. The Canadian Press serves hundreds of media outlets across the country, offering both text and audio for news, sports and entertainment stories. Some newsrooms use this service as a sole source of news. McDonald says that isn't the case in his newsroom. You use that as a springboard for ideas to move forward, in addition to everything else you're doing locally, as far as council meetings, news conferences, news tips. Res on the east side. Tamara Steele is a reporter and Thanks announcer at the St. John Station. So she says wire stories are helpful, but ideally she wants her newscast to be 90% local. So they're not actually located on the wire. That's stuff we generate ourselves or we write up in-house or we go out to news conferences and, and cover ourselves. Steele says she sees many benefits to having the wire do, system. You know, it does make the cast bigger. So, you know, for the period of weeks leading up to the uh, royal wedding, I ran quite a lot of material from CP because it, and it's a nice light end to the newscast, especially if the news is particularly dark that day. The Canadian press is why you can get news on your local station no matter where it happens in the world. Spending summer working in Africa is a dream job for most. One journalism student at Carleton University is doing just that. Jill Constantine reports. There we go, that's a beautiful sound. The soccer balls Cameron McIntosh has are not for the local team. They are for children in Rwanda. McIntosh will be spending two months working at a youth entertainment magazine, Kingali Unplugged. What I'm interested in finding are just stories of people just like you and I who are doing the best they can to provide for their families, who are doing the best they can to provide some kind of a future for their communities, all those things. McIntosh's father is helping him pack for the trip. He is impressed with the efforts his son is making. McIntosh hopes that by joining in a program where he can teach young people journalism, it will make an impact on the community. I'm really proud of Cam and what he's doing. and what he's undertaking and the contributions he's going to make to another culture. Coming from a family of journalists, McIntosh says that he was always encouraged to pursue what he wants to do with his career. I just saw it immediately as just another adventure. Just, and and uh, 
I, I couldn't have been happier. While in Rwanda, McIntosh will be updating his blog, Dispatches from Kingali. The blog will be a day-to-day -day account of what McIntosh is doing on his trip and will be a way for him to stay connected. In Fredericton, Jill Constantine, Community College News. The Right to Information and Protection of Privacy Act is new to New Brunswick. This legislation was put in place to give the public better access to information. But is it doing its job? Michael McDonald has more. The Right to Information Act was adopted in 1978. Since then, the Act has continually expanded to limit what information is available. Well, it's in New Brunswick, it's a brand new piece of legislation that opens up the door for uh, the public's right to access public information. Essentially, in a nutshell, that's what that is. That but does not mean the, that all public documents are available. Some documents that you could obtain before are not accessible now. If, uh, if the documents are about something that the government didn't implement, then they don't have to release it under the new version of the law. In the latest annual report, requests for information peaked in the early 2000s and have since dropped. Poitras no, makes about right. a dozen a year, kind of almost half of all media requests, and not all of those are granted. Since September of 2010, the Privacy Commissioner has seen 120 files related to refused requests for information. Poitras says journalists and the public should seek information that no one is offering. Everyone should use it uh, because the more you use it, sort of, I, I think the healthier the democracy is, frankly. Bertrand says that once the new rules for requests are understood, there will be better access to public information. In Fredericton, Michael McDonald, Community College News. Well, that's our show for today. We hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks to Rogers for putting us on the air. For stories online, visit us at jschoolnbcc.ca. Take five or something. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> if I sound too radio-y, radio radio -y, they are required to tackle all forms of media in order to bring you news any way you want. We looked at the... <clears throat> Do I look splendid? The world's last typewriting factory Typewriter factory? Typewriter. Type, typewriter factory. The world's last typewriting factory. Typewriter factory. Writer, writer. Type, typewriter. I kind of. Organizations such as the RTNDA are currently undergoing changes to their code of ethics. <clears throat> McKean believes. McKean believes that there's. McKean believes that if there's an issue, in time, it will come out. But for now... <sighs> large newspapers such as... Large newspapers such as Brunswick Knee... Five, take five. Let's Andrew. Yep. You may not remember the last time you picked up a local copy... A local copy. <laughs> Many of you may not remember the last time you picked up a print, what is it? Paper copy, paper copy, paper copy. Many of you may not remember the last time you picked up a print copy, a paper copy, paper, actually paper. Organizations such as the RTNDA, organizations such as the RTNDA, organization, organizations such as the RTNDA are currently In Woodstock, I'm Ethan Hazlitt, CJ. Wanna... <laughs> All ready for this? Dinner. We've spoken about the 24-hour news cycle and the immediate expectation to have video. Okay, stop, stop filming. Just give me, give me a second.